Good afternoon. I'm Larry Davis, Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer, welcoming all of you to another edition of Campus Conversations. We're grateful and thankful that you have chosen to share some of your time with us today. And we have an exciting topic to share with you with a wonderful panel of outstanding guests. We're gonna pull up an introductory slide for you to give you the full picture of what we're going to talk about today. And what we're going to talk about today is equity at ACC. As you will note from the introductory slide, ACC is committed to increasing equity in our hiring and managing of our most valuable resource for our students, our people. And our people represent the great faculty, staff, and employees that presently serve throughout the district. You can pull the screen down. So what we're going to do today is celebrate the rollout of new training and professional development initiatives that will help achieve a part of our chancellor's priority one goal of reducing inequities at ACC. Our friends in the Teaching, Learning, and Excellence Division already offer multiple equity training opportunities for faculty and its leadership with new offerings just around the corner. And so we're very excited and happy to announce that Human Resources, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and the Truth Racial Healing Transformation Campus Center are launching phase one of strengths-based cultural proficiency training for non-faculty hiring managers and supervisors beginning next month, February. Later in the future, during phase two launching, we will offer similar training for all employees. And eventually in a phase three, we will offer the same type of training for our students. The subject matter that is covered in the present diversity, equity, and inclusive training basically includes, but is not limited to cultural competence, unconscious bias, the meaning of respect, diversity in action, and much more. Detailed registration information is available in this month's ACC Supervisor Professional Development News Magazine issued monthly by Human Resources. And now a word about our esteemed and outstanding guest today. It's our pleasure to introduce to you the following individuals who are gonna share with you some thoughts on equity at ACC. There is Erica Breedlove, the manager of our employment and outreach services. There is Hadiana Gavaria, better known as Nana, our manager of staff professional development and evaluation. There is Michelle Fitzpatrick, assistant dean, faculty development and hospitality professor. There is Ruth Reinhardt, our associate vice president of student support services. And of course, our own Dr. Charles Cook, the ACC provost. Our guests will take about five, maybe seven minutes each to share their perspective on the equity training available and provided for Riverbats here at Riverbat Nation. So let's first begin with Erica Breedlove, who's going to give us an overview of equity training at AC. How about it, Erica? Thank you, Larry. And um, thank you, it's a pleasure being here. Again, my name is Erica Breedlove. I'm the Manager of Employment and Outreach Services in the Office of Human Resources. And I'm gonna talk about equity training today at ACC, our vision for 2021 and the benefits that we expect to come out of it. Today, we are offering equity training to our faculty participants in hiring. Um, there's an equity tra um, training one, two and three. And let me kind of talk to you about how we um, got to the, the training, how the training was developed. Um, we have a equity and faculty hiring steering committee that is a tri-chair of our very own associate vice president of academic programs, Dr. Galen Scott, our vice president of human resources, Jerry Tucker, and um, one of our full-time faculty history instructors and also serves as special assistant to our provost, executive vice president, who you will hear, Dr. Suzanne Summers. And they chair the steering committee that um, includes full-time faculty, 
about 17 or, or 20 of us in, in various representatives throughout the college. And for the first year in year one, this started three years ago, we literally took a look at the faculty hiring process and we looked at different steps and we revamped the entire process. The process was um, entirely um, based upon the feedback and the outcomes we were currently getting, not just in hiring, but our student outcomes. And then we also based our efforts in our participation and um, with a university, the University of Southern California Center of for Urban Education. Dr. Stella Bissamon Seal um, provided opportunities for various universities and colleges um, to participate in diversity and equity and inclusion training uh, as it pertains to hiring. ACC was one of the first to um, be recognized as one of the individuals who had already taken some steps. In year two, we were very well recognized and had the opportunity to participate in a grant in which we um, were awarded the seal of excellence um, in um, Excelencia um, for a Hispanic serving institution. And we've seen progress um, in our efforts. Each faculty hiring participant has to complete equity training prior to the review of applications and interviewing currently. Um, so committee chairs um, participate in equity training as well as all committee members. Um, one of our faculty members, um, Sam, um, Samuel, um, he goes by Sam, Echeverria Cruz leads the training with about five or six other participants. So it's a faculty led initiative. Um, we um, also um, started in year three, um, a equity in adjunct hiring where that particular steering committee is headed by Suzanne Summers. Uh, we are defining the hiring processes for adjunct um, and we will further develop training for that area as well. Now that we've had equity training for full-time faculty participants in hiring um, for three years, each participant is um, participating in a different in-depth training. So the first year, um, those who were participating in year one would complete equity training one. If they've completed equity training one in year two, then they would get an in-depth equity training and only the new ones would participate in equity training one. And then year three are for those who've been completed equity one and equity two training. Our vision for 2021 is to expand equity training to, um, for participants and not only full-time faculty, but adjunct as well as staff um, participating in the hiring processes. And the benefits that we like to see is that we better serve our students. Um, that's number one. So that we bring in new hires who will be very well prepared, who feel that they are part of the community and they have a seat at the table. So we're, we're providing opportunities for them to be um, acclimated well into our ACC culture. We want to enhance and enrich our experiences. Um, and when I say our, I mean everyone, the applicant experience, the committee participant experience, and as employees, so that we can broaden our perspectives and reinforce our collaboration throughout the institution. It is our hope that you have questions and you too become involved. I've received several, uh, I shouldn't say several, a few um, feedback from those who participated in the first year training who had their reservations, uh, reservations that pertain to slowing down the processes um, that may have um, feelings of taking away different um, viewpoints of the past or getting rid of historical um, processes. Um, they now feel that um, they, they understand the process, they want to do more and how they can help. Um, and it's our feeling that we hope to share this experiences with others so we can bring more people to the planning table and become involved. Thank you. Erica, thank you for that excellent overview of our equity training at ACC. You're welcome. And now, 
it's my pleasure to present to you to provide us an understanding of ACC from the HR perspective, Nana. Carry it away, Nana. Thank you, Larry. Good afternoon to all of you. Again, my name is Aidana Gaviria, but most of you know me as Nana. I am the manager of staff professional development and evaluations. Um, I've also had the pleasure to be engaged in um, all the equity efforts that ACC started to do many, many years ago. I'm not going to tell you how many uh, because it will age me. <laughs> um, my work um, started when I was part of the cultural competence work group, and that brought uh, members of the ACC community um, from the staff uh, arena as well as the um, faculty. Um, and we all got together, work on a plan, develop a three-year plan with the help um, of uh, Dr. Holly when she was part of, before she was, she was in charge of the equity office. And one of the things, sorry. I'm sorry. And one of the things that we um, talked about uh, then, that's my daughter. Give me a second. Sorry about that. She gets very excited like I do. Um, so at the time we developed a three-year plan and um, we worked systematically with faculty, with the staff. We never got to work with the students and that was something that we always wanted to do. But at the end of that plan, we made a presentation to the administration and one of the recommendations was that we um, created an office of equity. Dr. Cook was around, he was a great supporter and here we are. So at the time when that happened, I thought it was very important that my staff and myself would take a look at the different professional development offerings that we were putting out there for our employees and try and identify the gaps that we had in terms of equity. So the first thing that we did was to look at our signature, signature programs that we have in terms of development um, and then start incorporating equity as part of that development. So the first program that we, that we did that for was the supervisor certificate program. So whenever our future supervisors who are part of that program, uh, when we talk, I'm sorry, when we talk about the competencies that we wanna develop, one of them is equity and we dedicate time to talk about that. And whenever we have, whether they are internal or external speakers talking about the other competencies, we mention to them what we want to, that we want them to bring their perspective in whatever they're talking about that has to do with equity. Because at the end of the day, um, our big objective is that equity becomes part of the fabric of ACC. So whenever we're uh, communicating, whenever we are making decisions, we have that equity lens in mind um, so that it help us to become better professionals and to serve better, in my case, my employees, but also um, so that my employees can serve better the students. Uh, then we introduce equity into the Leadership Academy when we um, uh, took over that particular program. We now have program developments, a program development for administrative assistance and equity is a big part of it. Um, last year, when Larry took over the equity office, uh, we immediately got in touch with him because we knew that it was time for us, uh, knowing what the chancellor priorities were, to start developing a plan and collaborating with this office um, to provide equity training to all of our employees in a more consistent basis. We were doing it before, but it was on a request basis through uh, our customized training um, program that we have. So we were able to support various departments whenever they need, whenever they needed equity training. Um, thankfully, now that Larry is here, we have a plan and we're gonna start, as he mentioned, deploying training next month for our supervisors. So we are very excited about that. We're basically having trainings throughout the year. All of them have been uploaded to the professional development database. So I suggest to all the supervisors um, to start um, looking into those, picking the best day and time that works for them um, so that we can start this particular work. And then it is also very important because um, my office is also involved in the training process for the staff 
um, in regards of the three C's initiative. So again, what we wanna do is ingrain the equity work in everything that we do at ACC. And the way that we see it, the three C's initiative goes hand in hand with equity, with all the topics that we'll be talking about, unconscious bias, being respectful, recognizing what our strengths are and bringing those to the workplace and recognizing what the strengths of the other employees are and our colleagues and our team members so that we can rely on each other based on those strengths and also support each other uh, when we have to develop our challenge areas. So that's where we are. My team is very excited to be collaborating with Larry. We'll continue to do customized training in case somebody wants um, some additional training for their team. So we are just basically here to support you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Nana. We appreciate the home run that you and your beautiful daughter just gave us from those wonderful insights. And it's, now it's, it's my pleasure pandemic. to uh, transfer it over to one of our other great partners from to give us the T-led perspective, our own professor and our friend, Michelle. Come on, Michelle. Well, thank you so much, uh, Larry, for having me and good afternoon to everyone. I'm really excited to spend this short period of time to share with you some content on the work that we've been doing on the faculty side, which really mirrors a lot of the things that Nana just shared as well, and sharing with you some updates of what's coming soon as too, which are great partnerships with folks like Larry and Kyrie. So in faculty development, and you can go to the next slide here, all this content I'm sharing with you is just from the fall semester. So I just wanted to start off by telling you that if you look to the far right there, we have already had in just the fall semester, 1,558 equity focused professional development hours completed. So big round of applause for uh, so much of our faculty here at ACC. There is a component of that that is staff that participated as well. So there are 300, or I'm sorry, 308 faculty and staff that participated, uh, unique individuals there. Now this next slide shows you just the breakdown of who that is. 53% of those folks that are participating in just the fall is adjunct faculty, 39% full-time faculty, and 8% of those are uh, staff that have also joined in in our programming as well, because we try to keep it open for anybody that's really interested. This is an idea of what programming we had and where these numbers came from, from the fall. So in faculty talent onboarding and all of the programming we do, like Nana said, it's all grounded in equity. Everything is all looked at with an equity lens. Uh, we are walking the walk, right? We are, we're doing it all. And we kick off with the onboarding of new faculty with an equity focus as well. In our Teaching and Learning Academy, which consists of four courses that are five weeks each, once again, all grounded in equity, but the second course is called Building a Community of Learners, and that is a really heavy focus on culturally responsive teaching. This past fall, we offered all faculty and staff to be able to attend the Lilly Conference, which is an evidence-based teaching and learning conference that was held virtually. We're so lucky to be able to open that to so many folks here at the college. We had about over 280 participate and they had a track that was dedicated to culturally responsive teaching and equity work and assessment as well. Now on the bottom two, these two buckets, these are 100% equity focused. Discover Your Blind Spots is uh, a workshop that is two and a half hours. Our team developed and vetted the content through our partners, Larry Davis and Kyrie Williams. Uh, this workshop's a great place for folks to start. If they're not quite sure, how do I dive into this work? What, where do I get the basics, the grounding, the definitions? Discover Your Blind Spots really defines the difference between equity and equality, and then how that pertains to student retention and success. And this is something that we open the doors to faculty and staff. And this fall, we had 83 staff members attend that and about 180 faculty members. 
And this last one, becoming an equity-minded instructor. This is a six-week course put on by a faculty member who had done a lot of research and is very data-informed. Uh, this six-week course, it is both synchronous and asynchronous components of it. And our faculty are invited to attend this where they do a deep dive in their aggregated data in their own actual classes. They are not only learning throughout the six weeks, they are applying their knowledge immediately into their class and producing work to show the differences uh, in their results based on what they're learning in this course. It's really been hugely successful. So this is just an idea of where those numbers came from. Uh, next, please. Some key metrics. We came up with some questions. We worked with our faculty advisory group and our equity partners to say, what are two, what are two great questions we could have across the board in all of our work that we're doing so we can look for consistencies and find out where we might need to grow and develop. First, we came up with, I feel more comfortable in my ability to apply equitable practices in my work. And I've increased my understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion practices in relation to my work. So next, I'd like to show the results of this for just a couple of the programming. So the, the top section of this is the first question I just mentioned. The second is the, the bottom part is the second question. And you can see that we're getting lots of yeses here. <laughs> and then there's a Lilly conference, there's one person that said no, and we inquired to learn a little bit more about that and learn that they just hadn't had the chance to actually attend any of the sessions yet. So it's really great to see these results that we're making an impact on folks based on the professional development that's being offered. Next, please. So in the fall, if we're looking at it, I want to focus in on these two programs. Discover your blind spots, becoming an equity-minded instructor. Rather than you just hearing it from me that these are great and we're having positive feedback, I just wanted to share a few quotes from each. In Discover Your Blind Spots, it was stated, this was one of the best workshops I've ever attended at ACC. So useful, great participants and presenters. I really like that one because it got to show that we could create an atmosphere that participants and presenters could engage and feel comfortable. I really enjoyed this workshop. It created a safe space to open the door about these conversations. I was comfortable sharing my thoughts and ideas. We know that this work is difficult and it can create a lot of us to feel uncomfortable. And it's okay to feel uncomfortable in this work, but doing that together. Then looking at that six week course, Becoming an Equity-Minded Instructor, I did not expect the experience to personally transform me because I thought I was already bringing equity in the classroom. You taught me to look deeper and I'm glad I did. It was also said, I recommend that this training be mandatory for every instructor at ACC. Nobody cringe. <laughs> it, will be, it will open the possibilities to have more successful students and will increase our graduation rates. Next. And what we have moving forward this spring, we're very excited uh, to be working with our Chief Equity Officer, Larry Davis, and the Director of our Truth Racial Healing Center, Transformation Center, Kyrie Williams, it's a mouthful there. And we're really excited that we're working with them to develop part two and part three of our workshop series. This will be a certificate starting with Discover Your Blind Spots. It's already had 181 participants on the faculty side. Next one will be Sustain the Conversation, Keeping the Spotlight on Race, and that rolls out this February. And third workshop is In Development. It will be out in the summer or the fall, and we welcome all faculty and staff to join us in these workshops. This is just a very short, update on what we've been doing just this fall. It doesn't even include spring development day. They had an entire track dedicated to equity, inclusive assessments, and more. Uh, but we just wanted to give you a quick update as to what's going on and what's coming soon. And if you ever have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to facdev at austincc.edu. Thank you so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle, for that, uh, those wonderful updates and great information. 
And before we transfer to our third a special person to give us some perspective on uh, equity here at ACC, I just want to say how grateful I am in, during the time I've spent here at ACC to work with each of these individuals. They are outstanding professionals, all of them. And you can trust them to give you the very best that they have to offer with their expertise. And so I want to encourage people in River Bat Nation to work even closer with all of the individuals on this panel today. And with that, we want to ask that uh, Ruth would give us the student affairs perspective on uh, equity training at this time. Thank you, Larry. I am super excited to be here to talk about an important topic that Student Affairs does in their daily work. Uh, I am Dr. Ruth Reinhardt. I'm the AVP of Student Support Services, and I've been at ACC almost 15 years and served in the roles of a counselor and student services team. As a first-generation student, I am so passionate about the challenges that underserved students face. Um, as student affairs professionals, we really recognize the value of creating a truly inclusive, equitable, and, and learning environment that will continue the advancement of, stu of student success. We recognize that equity needs to be part of every conversation we have about the future of our students and our work with each other. Through equity training, we are really able to look at opportunities for growth, so that we can create an environment where we can address the needs of our, of our diverse student population. So how do we address those demographic disparities in student affairs? We really are looking at how we better serve students by evaluating our current policies, practices, attitudes that impact student income. I'm sure you're probably wondering. So currently, Dr. Chasta Buchanan is our vice president, and she's almost been with us almost a year already. Through her leadership, we're working really hard to reimagine how we meet the needs of all of our students. We provide a wide array of exemplary programs to support the teaching, learning process, and increase opportunities for students to define and reach their educational and career goals. Our area includes enrollment management, led by Dr. Melissa Curtis, um, student engagement by Dr. Willie, uh, who's led by Dr. Willie Martinez. Student accessibility and social support services by um, Stephen Christopher, and then my area. I personally would love to share uh, to share a wonderful story that I had the opportunity to work with um, with Larry Davis and Kyrie um, Williams regarding the um, strengths program. That is what was available to us. And we took advantage of working with Kyrie and Larry with my team and really, really digging deep into a safe environment into what our strengths were, where our biases were. Um, and so we could kind of transform that into our work with students. It was very impactful. I think uh, my team was a little surprised at the outcome of that. And I will say that um, after we finished our, our training session with Larry and Kyrie, many of my team members said, how can I get my team to do it? Because they really learned a lot and it really helps us to look at our biases. How can we improve um, and in our work with students? And that's at the core of what we do in student affairs is really how can we really make ACC a safe place for students so we're including the needs of our students that are so unique and diverse. Um, and I am so proud to be part of ACC, the organization that is really, really putting this to the forefront. I know um, when Larry just started at the organization, I know he said we're ahead of the game. And I'm so proud that we are taking this as a, um, it's a chance for priority. And I am proud that student affairs can be part of this work and that my team, all, all of Dr. Buchanan's team is really committed to this training and looking forward to the opportunity to work with you and everybody across the college um, on equity issues. So if you have any questions about this, the general equity strength training, let, please let me know. I'll be glad to give you my input. It was a wonderful um, opportunity for my team. And I think that your team can learn a lot from that as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruth. Terrific information. And again, what a outstanding array of professionals we have here at ACC driving this great work of equity. And now let's hear some remarks from our own prestigious uh, provost, 
Dr. Charles Cook. Charles. Thank you, Larry. I want to start by wishing all of you uh, a happy new year. If I haven't already done so, I really do feel that it, this is a new year. Uh, we've gone through quite a turbulent period in our history. It's been several years, I think, that have been marked by extreme uh, divisiveness, this horrific medical pandemic we have that has resulted in the loss of over 400,000 American lives. It's, it's just almost inconceivable. But thank God, uh, we do have some vaccines available now and, and hopefully they'll be distributed widely and equitably very soon. Uh, obviously that has caused terrific stress, uh, both uh, economically and it has compounded uh, social injustices that have come to light. But you know, it is a new year. It is a new day. And uh, I'm very buoyed by, by the opportunity to do better. If you were unable to watch any of the uh, inauguration yesterday, I really urge you to Google the inaugural poem. Young uh, Amanda Harmon is her name, uh, Gorman is her name, 22 years old. Oh my gosh. What an inspirational and uplifting poem. It's called The Hill We Climb. And she really challenges us. She tells us our inertia, our inaction will become the inheritance and the burden of the next generation. So we cannot, we will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be. You know, I think so much of the divisiveness that we have gone through is really due to equity gaps, uh, gaps that uh, exist in terms of opportunities for people to improve their lives and that of their families, but also gaps in the outcomes that those opportunities provide. And I know we are all committed here at ACC to close those equity gaps not just in the opportunities, but in the outcomes. And thank you, staff. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Hadiana. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Larry. Wow, what great work you are all doing to close those gaps, to make sure we have equity in hiring, equity in training, equity in student services, equity in instruction. It makes me so proud to be a member of Austin Community College. I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for everything that you are doing. This is a new year. It's gonna be the best year yet and lead to better years in the future. So thanks so much for joining us. And Larry, so glad you're here. So glad you're here, man. All right, Charles, as always, thank you for your wisdom, encouragement, and of course, for your leadership. Riverbat Nation, we appreciate the insights and the thoughts of our esteemed guests today. As earlier referenced, and unfortunately as evidenced by the attack on our national capital and some continuous rumblings during what is normally a peaceful transfer of power at our nation's highest levels, we get the picture and we understand that progress toward a better, fairer and more equitable society will not happen on its own. In fact, uh, achieving human equity is hard work. It can be tiring and the evidence of progress appear agonizingly slow at times. However, as our great Chancellor Rhodes, these great team members that I have the privilege of working with consistently model and show us great and lasting change comes through small, persistent, and resilient steps done with care, collaboration, and connection. Think about it. With one small, just, yet curring step and executive order, our new president, Joseph Biden, yesterday jump-started and returned to its rightful place, racial and human equity, at the national level. 
So for ACC, training our faculty and staff leaders to apply greater equity in our hiring and managing of people is one of many small, persistent, and resilient steps that ACC is taking to achieve equity. ACC is for everyone, and ACC is creating a welcoming and inclusive environment where your and my human differences will not predict our success. Thank you, Riverbat Nation, for joining us on Campus Conversations today, and have a great afternoon.